Just between Asia and Europe, along the Caspian Sea lies this country, Azerbaijan. Along with Georgia and Armenia, it's one of the countries in the Caucasus region. However, the capital of this country, called Baku, has a totally different vibe from the others with its Muslim culture, coastal cityscape, and lucrative oil supply. Azerbaijan is known for its rapid development as a result of its oil industry. The modern city of Baku is decorated with Persian-style buildings and also features some futuristic steel and glass skyscrapers. Because of these characteristics, this city is often compared to Dubai and even called the next Dubai. I visited this city a while back, so I'm gonna share what I saw in Baku. Let's get started! The downtown of Baku is close to the sea, and you can access it easily by a subway or a bus. Just like other former Soviet Union countries, the public transportation is very cheap here. One-way bus and train rides only cost 20 cents, and you can use an app to call a taxi for a reasonable price as well. The old city is Baku's historical center, with many of its 12th century defensive walls still intact. Once you step in there, you feel like you've traveled back in time. kind of reminds me of the old town in Dubai. But Baku's old city was a lot quieter than Dubai's. It had fewer shops and tourists, and one area was very residential. It's structured like a maze, and there are some carpet shops which Azerbaijan is famous for. Azerbaijan is also known for having a lot of UNESCO intangible cultural heritage. These carpets are part of that. In addition to its intangible cultural heritage, the old city itself is the first place in Azerbaijan that was classified as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Outside the walls surrounding the old city, you can see a totally different face of Baku. Azerbaijan architecture typically combines elements of the East and the West. While ancient architecture treasures survive in the walled old city, a lot of Azerbaijan architecture has heavy influences from Persian architecture because in the 1900s, newly rich oil barons modeled the city after Paris. The city center is a place where fashionable shops and cafes meet. The whole area is busy and lively every day. The city of Baku not only has Parisian style buildings, but also futuristic and unusual ones. Maybe this is the biggest reason why Baku is called the next Dubai. Baku is advancing its production of these modern architectural constructions, and you can easily find some of them while getting around the city. This is one of the most famous buildings called Haider Aliyev Center. It's a building complex noted for its gorgeous and distinct curved flowing style. Since its official opening in 2012, this center has been attracting a lot of people visiting Baku. Although Azerbaijan is a Muslim-majority country, it's not as strict as many other Muslim countries. There are a lot of bars on the streets and most people are dressed like Western people. There are comparatively not many mosques in the city, and I didn't even hear Azan during my stay. But what they have in common with other Muslim countries is people's kindness. They speak Azerbaijan and Russian, two languages I cannot speak, so I often had trouble communicating with them, but so many people kindly helped me at the shops and supermarkets. But in a touristy area, there are some people who try to overcharge tourists, so be careful of that. Baku has an unofficial name, City of Winds. Because of its location along the Caspian Sea, the city is very windy all year round. The pounding wind is strong enough to make walking in a straight line a little difficult at times. But on the days when the wind is quiet, a lot of people enjoy taking a walk at the park along the sea. Those three towers in the background are called the Flame Towers, which is a landmark of Baku. The three flame-shaped towers symbolize the alias of Azerbaijan, 
Land of Fire. I guess Azerbaijani people like giving nicknames. But you can see Azerbaijan's close relationship with fire on the state emblem too, which has a red flame as the centerpiece. There is a place near Back City where you can learn more about the reason. Alright, I just arrived at Ateshu Gyafu, the fire temple. Azerbaijan has a huge reserve of natural gas and oil. Sometimes the underground gas leaks out through gaps and produces flames. Today it's explained scientifically, but it must have been a very mysterious phenomenon for the ancient people when flames often burst from the mountains and the sea. Especially because most worship the natural elements of earth, fire, air, and water. Zoroastrianism, once one of the largest religions in the world that is believed to have influenced the birth of Judaism, was born during that time. The early Zoroastrians placed great importance on fire, which they believed symbolized the light of wisdom. The altar of Ateshuga is straightly right above the natural gas vent with a large flame in the middle and four smaller flames on the rooftop corners of the pavilion. Surrounding the temple altar were a number of small cells which held ascetic worshippers and pilgrims. The fire temple itself has been reconstructed and today these flames are lit by gas popped from the nearby city. The temple now functions as a museum for tourists. The temple offers its visitors a great understanding of Zoroastrianism with the models of worshippers' lives and ancient artifacts. It is registered as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. I have limited time to spend in Azerbaijan this time, but this country has so many other great things to offer. They annually hold a world-famous Formula 1 motor racing event called Azerbaijan Grand Prix. They offer delicious Caucasus food, and Baku is particularly famous for caviar from the Caspian Sea. Outside Baku city, there is magnificent nature and very unique cultural traditions such as crude oil bath. It seems like the country has a lot of potential for tourists, but there are some problems as well. Even though the country has been developing rapidly from oil production, some local people that I met during the trip told me that the people's lives have not really improved and that they still consider the country to be poor. What disturbed me a little during my stay in Baku was the air pollution caused by so many cars all over the city. But still those things can't negate the fact that the country keeps growing as you can see from the skyline on Baku. Do you think Baku could be the next Dubai? Please let me know your thoughts in the comments. Also, if you want to see more travel vlogs like this, please thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. Bye.